What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Why You Should Love With Me, The Lonesome Ravador. Now today I bring you another special treat, as per ever, as every week comes, I'm bringing you Why You Should Love Spec Ops The Line. That's going to be a little bit of a, as ever there's a glare from my computer screen. Anyway, let's get this thing started. Now number one, Spec Ops The Line brings us back to one of our fantastic, well, as I imagine if some of you have seen my older Why You Should Loves, you'll probably know that I do adore quite a few voice actors. And in Spec Ops The Line does not disappoint, one of the, my most favourite voice actors of all time, uh, plays the lead character in this in this in this game, and he is Nolan North. Nolan North does a voice of uh, Drake. Uh, well, Nate technically. I, I sometimes call him Drake. I'm not too sure why, but Nate from Uncharted. He does the voice of Penguin. Um, no, he doesn't. No, he might, I think he might do the voice of Penguin and. Um, I think he does the voice of Black Mask as well. I think he does the voice of Black Mask and Penguin in uh, Batman. That's the recent one, anyway. Um, he does the voice of so many other things, I cannot think of it right now. Oh, he does the voice of Richtofen from Zombies. Um, and quite a few other things, but I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of his main stuff. He's a fantastic voice actor, and this game does not disappoint, and he's a fantastic performance as per ever. He's more of an actor than a uh, voice actor, I'd say. He's a fantastic voice actor altogether. Phenomenal. Anyway, uh, let's move on to my second point. Spec Ops The Lion Reed does offer you, uh, like, a new kind of third person shooter aspect to games. It really is kind of very, very immersive when you play it. Uh, the game itself has uh, not, maybe not a unique aspect or maybe a unique gameplay to it. It's a, it's a normal kind of third person shooter. I mean, you can find the same kind of thing in other games such as like Gears of War. Um, try, my mind's gone blank for third person shooters. So I, I want to say Fracture, but I can't remember what Fracture is. That, that's not really important. But the main thing is that um, the game itself actually does have a fantastic uh, third person shooter aspect to it. But the main thing about it is that the fact that it's immersion and it really does kind of draw you into it because you actually have to... It's a very survival based kind of game. There are actually are points in which you actually do worry about ammo con con like conservation and stuff like that. So it is really quite cool and all that and the game itself is really fantastic and the third person shooter uh, aspect to it does not let it down. Anyway, let's, let's move on to point number three. So this is one of them games which really has been joining in with the uh, queue of games recently which have been doing moral choices. A lot of games these days such as Infamous... I guess The Last of Us, I mean, you, you uh, The Last of Us kind of, you kind of feel an emotional connection, but maybe not moral choices anyway. Uh, the Last of Us, I guess GTA 5, the end of that, or GTA 4 especially actually, throughout the game you get quite a few choices. I haven't played GTA 5 properly, so I apologise if I've been anyone. Um, I'm trying to think of other games, uh, you know, you know the kind of games which you get, where you choose, choose moral choices, and um, you decide on what you want to do, as in like, we want to be good or bad. And Spec Ops The Line really does definitely give you them moral choices, and it's not always the most kind thing to do. Compared to other games which I've done, as in such as, say, oh, Bioshock Infinite, Bioshock Infinite is a good example. Say for example, Bioshock Infinite, actually, maybe not the best example, I'm not too sure. Oh, actually, no, that is actually a good example, actually. Bioshock Infinite with the um, couple on stage, we can throw a ball at them, or not throw a ball at them. I actually... When I, when I played that, I felt quite an emotional connection between uh, myself and the characters in the game. Because obviously I felt I felt it was evil, what he, the guy was like telling you to do. And it wasn't correct that he should have been telling you to do that altogether. And, you know, I, I, I'm against racism, I'm not, I didn't think that was a good idea. But personally, comparing that to the, to, to some of the moments in Spec Ops The Line, I mean, I'm not one for racism and I find it really terrible that ever happens and it just makes me, it makes me, my gut churn, like thinking about it. But I mean, some of the choices you have to decide in Spec Ops The Line, they're really nitty gritty. You really, you really. Some of some of the choices you're actually thinking like, like you can make them. Um, the amount of times, the amount of times. Also, uh, the checkpoints are kind of brutal, which links onto what I'm about to say. But the amount of times I had to reload a checkpoint, um, just to see what else would happen if I chose something different. Uh, it was ah, oh, it was so intense. I mean, I actually made a choice at one point. It was uh, I won't explain. I'll just sort of like vaguely say, I had the choice to. Um, Basically, we'll say these person or people had just killed a friend of mine who you may or may not meet in the desert while you're there and um, you have the choice to kill them or not kill them even though they're technically innocent in a sense. If you play the game you'll understand what I mean. You'll, if anyone's played the game you'll understand what I mean. This is a part basically the end. It's about ha, 20, mm, half an hour of gameplay left before the end. But I mean, fantastic moment that is. Honestly, that's like, that's intense. That is. I'll try not to show it now. I'll try. I'll show some other different scene right now on the gameplay thing. But I mean, honestly, fantastic game that is. It really is. And the moral choices is such a, is such a fantastic foundation for the entire game. 
I, I personally think that's one of the main aspects what made me want to buy this game. I actually watched a uh, review from Yahtzee, uh, who is uh, probably more well known as uh, Zero Punctuation. He did a review, a review on this, and he actually fell in love with the game. It actually really does adore the Spec Ops Line. Just because the well, maybe not just for the fact that it is of the moral choices. In fact, it is a good game, fantastic game. But I mean, that really does make you think. It just something about it. It's like a gut feeling. It's like whoa, I don't know. But I mean, but yeah, the choices in it are just uh, it's fantastic, and it really does make you think sometimes about what you actually do and all that. Anyway, let's move on to my fourth point. To move on from the depressing moment of the uh, moral choices, I'm going to move on to talk about how diff the different ways in which you can kill people. As you are stuck in Dubai and the desert has overtaken the Dubai after a severe, I think it's a bomb or something like that, I've forgotten properly, I haven't played the game in quite some time, although you'll probably see it playing right now, um, there are actually points in which the desert has taken over and there are sand placed like, sand is like heavily going against the sea. There are points in the game in which an enemy can be standing near the sand, near the glass, and you can actually shoot out of the glass, yeah you can shoot out of the glass and obviously it'll kill the enemy, and then you, you get like an advantage over them because obviously they'll be dead, no surprise, and uh, you can clear out other enemies a lot easier after that person's gone. It's quite a quick, cool little thing that's given you a new, unique aspect behind it to kill people in a different way. Not obviously like brand new or unique completely, but I mean it's uh, something like not many people do do, especially like well anyway, so you know, it's a cool little game, a uh, cool little aspect of the game anyway, so anyway, let's move on to my fifth point. So this game, as most shooters these days, definitely doesn't uh, fall away from the multiplayer genre. Uh, the game itself has quite a cool little nifty multiplayer uh, multiplayer mode to it. It's not bad. It's not good, uh, like fan. It's not the best I've ever played, but it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not bad. It's a fun little. It's a very average kind of COD thing, but it's a good thing if you guys do enjoy playing a game and then having something to do afterwards. So I mean, if that's a good reason to love this game, as you know, you cannot get bored. As after you completed the game, you're then able to move on to multiplayer. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I've been awesome around the door and you guys have been beautiful as but ever. Hope you have enjoyed this Why You Should Love on Spec Ops The Line. If you have any other ideas for any other games which I should do in the future, I'm starting to run out now, guys. It's getting a bit difficult. Uh, uh, next week, I'll be coming up a brand new YouTuber Why You Should Love, which should be quite fun. And I do believe that's about it anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I've been awesome around the once again. And you guys, once again, have been very, 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 very beautiful. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. What? Yeah. <laughs>